people ask us, when do we turn on and turn off the receiver tuning light? This is the light that's on the receiver box. It's not the any light that's on the transmitter box. When people see the light, they push the button, they see the light come on, they think, wow. How can a light come on when there's only one wire going to it? Nothing coming back. But of course, the return path is a scalar field. So why can't we just leave the light on? Well, after setting up scalar, you adjust the tuning knob anti-clockwise until the transmitter coil is at its first uh, maximum brightness. Now, after tuning, then you turn on the receiver tuning light. That will light when the scalar field is being generated. Now, there's a few notes here. When you tune, focus more on the transmitter light, not so much on the receiver light. The receiver light is really confirmation that the A scalar field is being received. Now, this receiver tuning light only needs to be very, very dimly lit. And what I have actually found is that the scalar field can be there without the LED being lit at all. The reason being that LED is rated at 24 volts and the voltage from the scalar field can be perhaps six volts. It's the most, um, it may be a perfect uh, tuning point, but the LED is so dim, you can't actually see the glow. It hasn't reached the threshold of voltage for the LED to light up, but it is a, a proper scalar field that's been established between the two units. Um, so just use it as a confirmation that a scalar field is there. Uh, the, the receiver tuning light can be turned on after tuning to just confirm the settings. Now, because it actually takes energy from the scalar field to light up, turn it off before you actually start your scalar treatments. Now, some people have reported back to us that when they do a scalar bar feedback scan or when they run a Rife scalar, the receiver tuning light may be on, but it might be very dim or it might even be off. If the light was on before doing the frequency treatment, don't worry about whether it's on or off during the times when you're applying the frequencies. Some power is lost in the scalar digitizer. And also some power is lost in generator X, which is connected to the scalar transmitter. And the link cable becomes more sensitive to the effects of earthing. Now, if you've got your generator X connected to your scalar digitizer, you can do a test to confirm that the scalar field is indeed present. If you go to your system tab of Spooky 2 and you select the option to display generator X current and angle, what this will do is it will always show the phase angle and the current of the signal from generator X. You then go to the control tab and you select the, gra the scan graph. The graph will start moving. If you place your hand in the scalar field, the graph will change. It proves that a scalar field is present because your hand is going through the scalar field and your body, which becomes a receiver, absorbs the scalar energy. And the generator will see this respective change in the uh, field that's passing through to the receiver unit. 